Most of the time when I'm doing my makeup, I want people to go, huh? We're achieving that so far. Hello, I'm Crystal Method from RuPaul's Drag Race. Today, I'm gonna to be teaching a younger drag artist one of the looks I've done in the past over a Zoom call. Beautiful, you look great. <laughs> so this should be interesting. Hi, I'm Nell, aka Oliveira. To do drag is a way of expressing myself. Being an AFAB drag artist, which is assigned female at birth, I tend to reach less into just femininity and more into every single aspect of gender. My main concern isn't looking like a woman. I want to look like my own creation. I love inspiring other people. I think when people see you living your fantasy, it inspires them to go out and live their fantasy. <laughs> Are we, this is it? We're doing it? Hi. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. How are you? I'm good. I love your hair. Thank you. I love yours too. Um, what's your favorite thing about drag? The transformation and the creativity and just being able to like show yourself without, without judgment. It's hard to like judge someone when they're being that like... Yeah, yeah. Out there. So speaking about there, let's do it. I always like think it's funny when I'm watching YouTubers do their makeup and they just look perfect and they're like already mm -hmm. wearing their wig. That is not what I look like when I get ready for drag. So you are from Birmingham. I'm actually from a small town that's about 45 minutes away from Birmingham. I kind of like being the representative for queer people where I live. Yeah. Like the fact that when I walk down the street, just in my everyday life wearing what I typically wear in people's heads turn. I definitely get you there. Walk down the street and be like, <laughs> people are shocked or I'm yeah. the um, somewhat the token gay of my class. Like they'll go to me for all the questions and stuff. I mean, it's cool that you're an ambassador that way. Yeah, it's interesting. It's somewhat tiring, I think, because I've been through that since high school, since I came out. Um, it's like everyone comes comes to you for the for the questions. They're like, okay, so what's this? I know it's not at all related to you, but it's something vaguely LGBT. So what is this? Can yeah, you tell I, me? I need to explain it. Because I felt like it was my duty, you know? Um, if there were any actually queer kids coming to me and asking me, I'd want them to know and want to be accurate. Um, I just realized as I'm rubbing this in, I didn't shave. See, there's a problem I don't have. It'll just be a little added texture. Where I live, like, the pageant seems really big. Mm -hmm. um, and I find it interesting that they have um, different categories for everyone. So it's like there's the drag queens. They don't compete against the drag kings. And I know some people do do disagree with uh, AFAB queens and AFAB artists existing, mostly AFAB queens, or say that it's lesser. It's not a competition to yeah. be an artist, it's just expression. I did this look because I wanted to use every color, so <laughs> go in the color of the rainbow. I'll start with red. Right now we're trying to achieve just gorgeous, natural makeup. I feel like there's like, a handful of drag queen tips that you like have to learn in the dressing room. In Birmingham at least, we tend to not have like dressing rooms. It's more, you get ready where you live and then you get a taxi or an Uber and just have to kind of sit there looking however you look. <laughs> <laughs> I know at my show that I have, it's all ages. So you can get in if you're under 18, as long as you have adult supervision. I love seeing parents bringing their teenagers to a drag show. It's just really magical. This will stop when I go to university when I move away from home, but I always go to um, uh, shows and stuff with my mum because my mum's pretty much as much a drag fan as I am. I mean, she's friends with like my friend's mums and they have a little group chat and it's all just really adorable. I feel like allies are so important because, you know, if you're not in the LGBT group, and you hear thing, negative things being said, it's easier for you to like dismiss it. Everyone just needs to know that if they hear something <laughs> offensive, they need to stand up and say something. Yeah. 
I think we've got a pretty good, I like to call it the map whenever I do all my creams. It's just kind of like, this yeah. is kind of where I go. So I'm going to go ahead and set everything with my um, neutral set. Like when you wanted to do drag, how did you start? Um, I started by recreating people's makeup looks. That was the main thing. Um, Me too. Yeah. And then once I did that, I started to try and create my own style and discover how I wanted to do everything. Kind of have to know all the basics before you can yeah. break all the rules. There is a lot of things about drag that is still underground, which is like why I like it. It's why I like cherish being a queer person so much because it's kind of like we're like part of this like really cool group of people. <laughs> You know, I do have prepared, but I've not done. Glitter? Oh my gosh, me either. <laughs> yes, yes, give it to me. You're an animal. Yes, roar. Was that good? Am I a, am I a photographer? I feel like I've learned quite a lot about like you as a person as well, like your your whole process with everything and sort of changed my perception of, of how I, I would do a look, if you get what I mean. That's I mean, cool. you know, like it's helped me along because I'm very much a perfectionist. So it's, it's helped to kind of take away from that little bit freeing to just go all out on whatever, whatever it looks like. Yeah, and that took me a, a while to like get down with like not, not being perfect. And it's like, mm -hmm. The makeup is going to be perfect every time. It, like, it can't be. And so, yeah, you like it's okay for part of it to not look as great, but you can still like exude the same confidence every time, no matter what. Yeah, okay. All the emotions. 